Okay. All right. So the uh, stenography, uh, short is stego, right? So, uh, you know, he may say stego really means stenography. And that's not just me. That's just how it is uh, in the industry itself. And uh, stenography is the, uh, the art and science of hiding information by embedding secret messages within everyday messages, right? That's the definition. But what it really does is it hides messages in any type of file, right? It doesn't matter what that file is, right? So um, I'll show you um, uh, through a lab uh, how to hide messages in an image. And there are also other tools that you can purchase, like third-party tools, right? There's a combination of like stuff that's available for free that you can use immediately or stuff that you can pay maybe, you know, whatever, $20, $25 for, right? An actual application, um, which allows you to hide messages in any type of, you know, document, whether it'll be um, an Excel spreadsheet, an audio, a video file, you know, it really doesn't matter, right? And, and, and of course, multiple uh, image types. You can hide these or put these messages. You can put a picture behind another picture. Um, and I'll show you how to do it with, uh, with text. And then I'll show you different types of programs that I have available within a slide deck, you know, you know for those purposes. And uh, stenography is still, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's a big uh, field in that there's a lot of third party apps. There's like tens of thousands of applications that, that have, you know, the ability to do Stego. And um, Stego was big uh, back in, uh, you know, the 9-11 days, right, 2001. You know, uh, a lot of the, uh, you know, terrorist groups and stuff communicated with each other through stenography, right? And they, they would basically send, you know, pictures of, you know, uh, of, of, you know, very patriotic, you know, um, you know more American patriotic type of uh, pictures and in those pictures had, um, you know, either messages, you know, to activate these cells or maybe blueprints and, and plans of what, what was going to be done um, or just, uh, you know, either text or pictures, right? So again, it's a combination of either or or both. And the only caveat to this was that you needed to know what tool was used to create the stego. If you knew what tool was used to create it, then you could, in fact, use the same tool to be able to read it, right? So another way to say that is, um, if you create a, a stego uh, with a tool, more than likely that tool encrypts the information, right? It hides, not only does it hide the data, um, it also encrypts it. And then you use the same tool to decrypt it. And what you normally use to decrypt is a password, you know? So as long as you knew what the password was uh, and the tool, you're good to be able to read it, right? So those are the, you know, those are the caveats basically of stenography. You have to know which tool was used to create it. And that will give you the chance to, you know, how to, you know, basically to find, to figure out how to read, you know, the message that was behind, you know, that particular file or the image that was behind that file. Any questions so far on that? Okay. So stenography uses several methods to be able to hide um, information. And depending on what, you know, medium you're going to use, right? Whether it's a, it's a graphic file, you're going to hide behind. Uh, whether it's an audio file, you know, you're going to hide. Um, you know, you're going to hide behind. Um, it uses different types of techniques, you know. So one of the techniques I'm going to I'm, I'm try to explain to you uh, in hopes that you understand is the one called the uh, least significant bit, um, LSB. And the, the bottom line with this is the, the more bits the image, the easier it is to conceal, right? So, um, you know, I think most of you know, right, the more bits, you know, uh, an image is, uh, the more... Um, uh, sharp, right? The you know the, the more resolution that picture um, has, right? You know it's, it's it's it'll be of good quality, right? So if you got a 24-bit picture, you're gonna have a good quality picture that you can hide a lot of information in. So we'll I'll show you how how that works. And um, just a review in in regards to bits. You guys remember, right? Like 
how many bits in a byte? Eight. Exactly right. So eight bits in a byte. And this is exactly how the least significant bit works. You know, what it does is if to make the letter A, as an example, takes eight bits, right? Because remember, we said the letter A is considered one byte, right? If we said a, a file was a thousand bytes, then what we're saying is that file has a thousand characters, right? So a thousand characters, a thousand bytes, where each byte is representative of having eight bits. So to make the letter A is eight bits. So for mm -hmm. argument's sake, if I wanted to make the color red and I'm using, instead of calling it a, um, a, a letter, I'm calling it a pixel, right? So to make a pixel on a screen, guess how many bits that takes? Not a trick question. Guess, guess how many bits? How many bits was it to make a byte? Eight. Yeah, exactly. So let's let's go for a minute under the assumption that if it takes eight bits to create a letter, well, to make a pixel, it also takes eight bits to make one pixel. So if it takes eight bits to make a pixel, if I want to make the color red, it was safe to it would be safe to say that to make the color red in the pixel would be eight bits, right? If I wanted to make green, eight bits. If I wanted to make blue, eight bits. If I want to make yellow, eight bits. Okay, so on that same premise, what the least significant bit does is it takes a graphic file. And one of the things that they realized was, if I want to make the color red, yes, it takes eight bits. That's true. But if I removed the least significant bit, guess what color that pixel will be? If I wanted to make color red. And to make color red, it takes eight bits. But if I removed the least significant bit, meaning I removed one bit from it, now I have seven bits. Guess what color it is? Not a trick question. It's still red. <laughs> it's still red. Yeah, exactly. It's still red. So, so what this least significant bit does is it says, okay, to make the color red takes eight bits. However, if I remove the least significant bit, and the least significant bit for your for your, you know, you guys' your information, when we're when we're reading bits. The one, uh, the the rightmost bit is the least significant bit. The leftmost bit is considered the um, uh, the 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 most significant bit. Okay, so um, if we're reading uh, binary, normally the rightmost this is two to the zero power, two to the one, two to the second, two to the third, two to the fourth, all the way to two to the seventh power, right? Seventh. Right, most uh, significant bit, two to the seventh power, two to the zero is the least significant bit. So only point in telling you all this is that the rightmost bit in this sequence is the least significant bit, okay? So in here, just look at this first box here, right? Zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, one. That's eight bits. You guys agree with me on that, right? Eight bits? Yes. Okay. Assuming this was a pixel, to make one pixel color red, this would be the uh, the bits I would need to make that color. But let's say I wanted to make the letter A using eight eight of these pixels. Right, so I have pixel one, pixel two, pixel three, pixel four, pixel five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what I'm showing you guys on the screen here is nine pixels. Are you guys you guys agree with me so far? Okay. You guys you, you follow me, right? Nine pixels on the top. Yeah. 
okay? And all this is color red, right? Just for argument's sake, I'm saying this is this is the color red. I have nine pixels. All nine pixels together are making up that color red. But I want to make the letter A. And we know how many bits I need to make the letter A. Not eight. a trick question. Eight. <laughs> right, eight. Right, so, so that means all I would need are eight bits. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take whatever that least significant bit is. I'm just going to I'm just going to take it. So this one, I'm going to I'm going to take I'm going to I'm going to take that bit from uh, from that uh, first pixel, and I'm going to use it. And so to make a, by the way, this is the real letter a. To to make a in binary is actually zero one. Zero 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 one, right? So that's a in binary. So to make the letter a, I need in the fr in, in in my most significant slot, I need zero here. Then I need one. Then I need zero 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 all the way to one in the least significant um, section. So anyway, I'm going to take from the first pixel. I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to turn it into a zero. So that's why if you see down here where it says result, it was a one, I'm gonna change that to um, a, a zero because that's what I need. So I need I need this, this zero. Now I'm gonna take the one in the second pixel, but the one and one match. So that means I don't even need to use this bit because it's already one. So I don't even need to need to use it, but I'm, I'm going to borrow it anyway to, to make to make what I need. And then the third pixel zero. Um, so basically what I what I've done is wherever you see the little squiggly underneath here, I have zero, zero and zero. So I've only used three bits to make my letter A. Right, because if you see a from from um, looking at only the least significant bit, right? I'm only taking the least significant bit. I'm saying to make a, I need zero, one, zero, 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 one. There goes my a bits. So if you look at the the least significant bit, meaning I'm looking at the last bit from all these pixels for my result. And I'm creating the letter A. And the only ones I really, I only had to change were three bits. So by changing three bits in the eight pixel formation, I now have other bits I can, I can work with to make other letters. Or I can make other pixels, right? I can create other, other colors also, right? To create images. So if I'm doing this on a large file, it wouldn't even degrade the picture. You wouldn't even know that there's any difference, you know, to the picture. It would, it would, it would look exactly the same. You would, you couldn't tell that the picture had another picture behind it, or if the picture had a message or text behind it. Any questions on that? Do you guys follow it, or, or did you find that confusing? No, it makes sense. You're just borrowing the least important bit from all the pixels that you have and basically either converting it if you have to or leaving it as is in order to make the new result. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah that's, that's well said. I think you said it better than me. But that was good. Thanks for that. Any any questions? Is, is there anything that you guys do not understand about this? So there has to be a certain amount of zeros or a certain amount of ones, or it could just be like any amount of zeros or any amount of ones as much as long as it's eight. Yeah, as long as it's eight to make up either if I'm doing letters, you know, to make up the bytes, or if I'm doing pixels to make up the pixels, right? Because we're making the assumption that everything is surrounding itself around a byte, right? You know, the fact that eight bits to create something, eight bits to create a pixel or eight bits to create a byte. So when you're looking at it, how do you know which one is which? Um, um, the way I'm reading this, I'm, I'm reading this, you know, from uh, 
left from left to right, you know, meaning this is the first pixel, this is the second pixel, this is the third pixel. Let me see here, my, my, let me see my writing here. So this is the first pixel, that's the second, that's the third, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine pixels. But I'm not even using the ninth one, right? All I'm using is, is the first eight. So that's how I'm counting them. So that's why I'm saying zero to create this letter A, right? To create this letter A, I got zero, one, zero, 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 one. There goes my letter A. All that makes this. Right, so that's how that's how I'm I'm counting this. I could have laid it out differently, but that's how I'm reading it. You know, to in, in in hopes that you guys understand the order I'm doing this in, so that way you can see what I've made with this is the letter A, because this is exactly how the least significant bit insertion works, and this is how um, St uh, Stego um, operates. And that's how all these programs work. When, when you're dealing with a graphic and you have messages or even pictures behind that graphic. All right, I'm gonna, any, any other questions on this? If not, I'll just move on. Okay, so Uh, here are a few examples. There's one called uh, QuickStego. This is freeware, and it can it can open any JPEG, uh, GIF, or, or bitmap files. And what it does is it can only save the images as bitmap graphics. And it does so. It hides the uh, the text, but the text is not encrypted. You know, meaning if uh, you look through, if you looked in the picture using a hex editor, you may be able to extract the text that's behind that picture. You, you might be able to. So that, so they, they offer an encrypted version and I think it's like for $25 or something like that, you know, at least at the time. And they call it uh, quick crypto, All right? So anyway, that's, that's one example and I can show you what it looks like. So this is, uh, this is just screenshots but I'll show you an actual one that you can do online. Uh, so with this, opening up this picture, um, you put in a, a password and from opening up the picture, you would see the text. But if I opened up this picture using a graphics program, all I would see is just the picture. I wouldn't know that there was text hidden behind this picture. But I knew the person that sent me this picture, they used this program Therefore, I had also access to this program, open up the picture in this program and then put in the password that they told me so that I can open up and look at the text that's behind this picture. So now I'm able to see the text. And from here, I can save the text, you know, I can extract it and do whatever I need to, right? So one example. Another example is uh, a program called Data Stash. And this one's only $20. And this one, you can hide files within other files. Uh, the receptacle file remains fully functional, right? So, so meaning if I hid, let's say, uh, a, a picture within an audio file, the audio file is still an audio file. Or if I hid it behind a movie, a movie file, well, that movie file is still a movie. I can still, you know, play the movie and you wouldn't even know that there's something hidden behind that, you know, whether it be another, another file, is text, or even another movie, right? A movie behind a movie. And this is how this program, that, that same program, Data Stash, works. You take, and it's literally, you know, drag and drop, right? You take whatever you want the receptacle file to be. In this case, I have, um, you know, some movie here. I'm, I'm dragging and dropping, you know, that file. And then... Um, Within that, I have a couple of JPEG files that I'm stashing. 
right? So my receptacle file, or at least the file that, that shows up is going to be my movie. So if anyone's playing it, they would, they would see this movie playing some Halo, um, you know, some Halo, um, uh, uh, I think, you know, from a, from a game. Um, this is a, a video stream of a movie file and this will play and they will have no idea that there, there's uh, JPEG files hidden behind this. But if you knew what you were looking for, you would take the same program that was used, in this case, data stash, and then you would put in you know, the right password to unlock the, uh, the pictures behind this particular movie. Like it's that simple. It's just a matter of you know, knowing whatever the password, the, the program, and then putting in the password. So both parties have to be aware, you know, of, of each other's, um, you know, programs as well as the, the password. Any questions on that?